Hi, I'm Michael Despezio, and I am sure you are familiar with the dimensions of science as presented in the Next Generation Science Standards. So, how can we apply these dimensions to concepts in force and motion? Great question. Well, if you look at the dimensions of science, specifically the DCIs and also the performance expectations, you're going to find quite a bit of suggestion for how you best communicate these concepts to students, specifically around forces and motion, how a force causes something to move, and also how non-contact forces such as electrostatics create movement and I have a great activity to share with you which examines and explores this concept. Okay, for it all you will need is a regular balloon. Simple. You probably have these hanging around from birthday parties and also some gelatin powder. Any gelatin powder works. Try and get colored ones because they begin to look a little bit more impressive as you'll see in this activity. Okay, first step is to take that balloon and inflate it. And we'll put a knot in the balloon. Okay. Next step, you're going to take some of that gelatin powder and spread it on a desktop. So we'll do that right now. The next step is to charge up that balloon. And I'm going to use my hair. By the way, I've got a question for you. Which has more voltage, the third rail of a subway car or the voltage that I am creating on this balloon as I rub the balloon through my hair? Think about it for a second. Ready? The balloon. Typical subway voltage or voltage to a commuter train might have about five to 700 volts, yet this balloon gets charged up to thousands of volts, over 5,000 volts of energy. However, it has very little current. There's very few electrons that can move in this balloon system. Okay, but what it can do is create a great storm of gelatin. Watch what happens when I place this balloon just above the gelatin powder. Whoa! That is great! Can you see it? The granules of powder get attracted to the balloon. Once they hit the balloon, their charges dissipate and they fall back down due to gravity to the desktop. Then, once again, the electrostatic force draws them back up to the balloon. Then they fall again. This is a wonderful demonstration. Plus, it's an activity that students may want to do on their own. So this can foster self-directed learning. Let the students explore what types of balloons work best. Is there a certain shape? What about different powders? Do some powders react better to the charge attraction? Well, it's all up to you. But you can see how you can bring in concepts in the disciplinary core ideas and also the performance expectations into your classroom.